Today, we're set to explore one of the most enchanting and awe-inspiring phenomena in life. The arrival of a new human being. Often described as a wonder, the event of childbirth is indeed a cause for jubilation. Though childbirth is a common occurrence, witnessed by doctors who see numerous newborns, it is rare for them to encounter stories that truly astonish them. However, the story we are about to tell is bound to amaze even the most experienced midwives and healthcare experts. Pregnancy is often viewed as a wonderful and life-altering journey for a woman. To fully savor the delights of becoming a mother, it is essential that a woman's body is fit and ready to handle the rigors of the next nine months. Nowadays, teenage pregnancies are considered unique and often pose considerable challenges. Looking back, it was not unusual to find young girls, about 14 years old, pregnant in certain areas, yet, these early pregnancies frequently resulted in severe outcomes for both the mother and the infant. Worsened by the sparse medical resources then available, this highlights the critical need for well-timed pregnancies to prevent such devastating outcomes. Now, get ready to be captivated by an even more remarkable scenario where pregnancy happens in the most unusual and unconventional way, without any involvement from a father. We will soon unveil the details of how this phenomenon is possible. Every expectant mother carries concerns about her baby's well-being. Thankfully, thanks to advancements in modern healthcare, Physicians are now able to manage and avert many of the complications that may occur during pregnancy and childbirth. Even newborns born prematurely with significant health issues now have a chance to survive and prosper. Owing to modern medical treatments, it is not uncommon for expectant parents to find out they are expecting multiples, twins, triplets, or even more, while this may be unexpected for the parents. Such instances are quite common for medical professionals. Yet, imagine the astonishment when a baby is born with another fetus, or even two, inside them. Let's revisit an extraordinary event from five years ago in Hong Kong. A baby girl, initially thought to have a tumor in the womb, was examined right after birth. The ultrasound uncovered something utterly bewildering. There were two fetuses inside her. This rare condition, in which a baby is found to be pregnant with other fetuses, left doctors astounded the revelation that a newborn girl was found pregnant within the womb is nothing short of astonishing as it defies the norms of typical pregnancies and illuminates a profoundly uncommon medical phenomenon the child's body clearly not designed for pregnancy presented a bewildering and rare case that challenges our comprehension of human biology this narrative not only underscores the intricacies and unpredictability of childbirth but also showcases the astounding discoveries that modern medicine can bring to light. In an extraordinary turn of events, doctors found two embryos nestled between the young girl's liver and kidney. Such occurrences are extremely rare, with such a case happening once in every 500,000 births. And this instance was particularly unprecedented as it marked the first instance of a baby being born with two internal fetuses. Medical specialists identified this event as a rare instance where the girl, initially one of triplets, absorbed her two siblings during the gestation period. Dr. Dream Birch, an American gynecologist who specializes in these unusual conditions, posits that this could be a severe form of the more frequently seen vanishing twin syndrome where one twin is absorbed by the other in the womb, often unbeknownst to the mother carrying twins. In this situation, however, the absorbed fetuses did not disappear entirely. Instead, their brother was born healthy, while it was impossible for the girl to continue growing and developing with two embryos inside her. At just three weeks old, she underwent a complex surgery to extract both fetuses, which weighed 9 grams and 14.5 grams and were approximately 8 to 10 weeks gestational age. Impressively, the surgeons confirmed that the fetuses were male, indicating the baby girl might have had two brothers under normal circumstances. The precise reasons behind such pregnancy anomalies remain elusive, however. The successful operation underscores the remarkable progress in medical science. The little girl is now in perfect health. And thanks to the proficient medical team, she looks forward to a life filled with happiness. This case not only highlights the wonders of childbirth but also celebrates the medical professionals.
the unsung heroes in white coats, who make these wonders a reality. What are your thoughts on this incredible story? After hearing this story, do you have any thoughts? Tell us in the comments section below. And then there is a similar warm story. Let's continue to see. In the bustling heart of a sprawling metropolis, nestled amidst the soaring skyscrapers and bustling avenues, there lay a serene park that harbored a nightly enigma. Every night, after the sun had dipped below the horizon and the park's usual visitors had made their way home, a mysterious event unfolded. A little girl, barely three years old, would arrive quietly at the park. With no one in sight, she would find solace on a cold park bench, wrap herself in a tattered, worn blanket, and drift into sleep under the cloak of darkness. Her presence was a puzzle that went unnoticed, her story untold, and her origins a mystery. This little girl became a silent enigma to the few who occasionally glimpsed her. Yet her plight remained largely ignored by the passers-by and locals. It wasn't until Officer Colin Smith, a dedicated and compassionate police officer, was assigned to patrol the area that her circumstances would take a turn. New to the bustling city of Las Vegas and freshly transferred to the local police force, Officer Smith was unaware of the whispered tales that circulated about the park and its small, nocturnal visitor. During his initial week, as Officer Smith learned of the little girl's nightly appearances, his concern deepened, intrigued and troubled by why a child so young would be left to sleep outdoors without intervention. He decided to take matters into his own hands. Despite the apparent disinterest from social services and the community, Officer Smith was determined to uncover the truth behind the girl's situation and ensure her safety. On his first night of dedicated patrol in the park, Officer Smith found the little girl exactly as described, asleep on a park bench. Curled into a ball and shivering under a thin blanket, his heart ached at the sight, and with a mix of caution and compassion, he approached her quietly, hoping not to frighten her. Gently touching her shoulder, he whispered softly, Hello little girl, are you alright? Startled, the girl's eyes fluttered open. Seeing the towering figure of the police officer, she quickly grabbed a plastic bag that lay beside her, clutched it tightly to her chest, rolled off the bench, and ran as fast as her small legs would carry her. Officer Smith, taken aback by her sudden reaction, realized the depth of her fear and the complexity of the situation he was about to unravel. What seemed to be a simple case of neglect was possibly something more intricate and sinister. And Officer Smith knew he wouldn't rest until he had uncovered the full story and secured a better future for the mysterious little girl whose life had unexpectedly intertwined with his own, understandably terrified. She bolted as he pursued her, calling out, Wait, I just want to help. Despite his efforts, she vanished into the enveloping darkness, leaving him perplexed and deeply troubled. In his heart, he felt a profound duty to assist the frightened girl he had encountered in the park. The next day, determined to uncover more about her situation, Smith reached out to social services, hoping they might hold key information that could unravel the mystery surrounding her. To his dismay, they had no records of her existence. This revelation only deepened the enigma for the concerned policeman, who recognized that the situation was far more complex than he had initially thought. Committed to discovering the full story, he resolved to increase his nightly patrols in an effort to locate and gradually earn the trust of the elusive girl, a task he anticipated would be far from easy and require much patience. The following evening, he spotted her again, she was sleeping in a more hidden part of the park, likely in an effort to evade police detection. Despite the chilly night air, she seemed at peace, moving with greater caution this time. He approached silently, hoping not to startle her. Yet, as soon as he was close enough, she awoke abruptly, fear evident in her eyes, grabbed her belongings, and fled into the darkness once more. Frustrated but undeterred, Smith muttered to himself, damn it, she always gets away, but I'm not giving up. Realizing that his solo attempts were futile, he decided a new strategy was necessary if he was to make any progress in communicating with her. The following week, he enlisted the help of his patrol partner, Officer Hannah. They planned that the next time he approached the girl, 
Officer Hannah would be strategically positioned on the opposite side of the park to intercept her should she run. When they executed this plan, everything unfolded as anticipated. The girl, caught off guard by the presence of another officer, could no longer flee and was finally approached by the officers. Hannah had vanished into thin air just as she had done numerous times before. A seasoned and compassionate agent, Hannah had years of experience under her belt, adeptly solving a variety of challenging cases. This had earned her the unwavering trust of her colleague, Smith, particularly in delicate situations involving minors. On this occasion, when she intervened to stop a distressed child, she approached gently, using a tone filled with reassurance. Hannah calmly assured the young girl that they were there to help, not to harm her. Despite these assurances, the child was overtaken by fear and began to scream for help. Recognizing the need for a gentle approach, Hannah steadied her nerves and continued to engage the girl with a calm and soothing demeanor. My name is Hannah, and I'm a police officer. I promise you, nothing bad will happen to you while I'm here. This is my partner, Colin. He's a good man. You can trust us, she said, gradually calming the girl. Hannah and Colin then suggested taking the girl to a nearby coffee shop to warm up with some hot cocoa. The idea of a comforting drink and a bite to eat seemed to pique the girl's interest. As she smiled faintly and nodded in agreement. At the coffee shop, after sipping her cocoa, the agents gently probed for information to understand why the girl was alone and why no one had reported her missing. They learned her name was Amanda, but she was reticent, sharing only her name and that she slept on the park bench every night. Trying not to overwhelm her, Smith delicately asked, Amanda, where are your parents? Why aren't they with you in the park? With a trembling voice, her gaze fixed on the ground, Amanda revealed her tragic reality. My parents are dead, I have no family, I have no home. The agent's heart sank at Amanda's heartbreaking revelation. It was a devastating narrative, one that no child should ever endure. While they now understood why Amanda slept in the park, they were puzzled, as there were systems in place to protect children from ending up in such dire situations. The challenge now was to unravel these mysteries and ensure Amanda received the care and protection she desperately needed, despite the setbacks. Both officers remained steadfast in their commitment to assist little Amanda. They approached her once more, gently inquiring if she would allow them to escort her to the police station to explore possible solutions. However, Amanda declined again, requesting instead to use the restroom. Officer Hannah, empathizing with her need for some privacy, consented and escorted her to the restroom door, keeping watch as she entered. Time dragged on, and with Amanda taking longer than expected, Hannah decided to check on her. To her astonishment, she found that Amanda had managed a daring escape through a small window in the bathroom. The officers quickly exited the coffee shop and caught a glimpse of Amanda sprinting away into the darkness before they could reach her. This frustrating event was a significant setback in their efforts to aid Amanda and delve deeper into her situation. But it only fueled their determination to persist in their investigation and ensure her safety. The following day, both officers returned to the park and began to canvass the area, engaging with locals including dog walkers and parents, hoping someone might have insights into Amanda's whereabouts. Despite many acknowledging they had seen her, no one knew her origin or had shown interest in discovering more about her. A disheartening revelation that did little to advance the office's quest for answers. Seeing that their previous methods were proving ineffective, Colin decided it was time for a drastic change in approach. He opted to blend in as a regular citizen, staking out in his car each night waiting for any sign of Amanda. Days turned into nights with no success, and just as he was about to lose hope, he spotted Amanda darting out from a concealed alley near the park. She had been hiding there all along, learning from previous encounters. Colin chose not to confront her directly. Instead, he discreetly followed her intent on uncovering her origins and the deep secrets she seemed to be harboring. His resolve was strong, though he was unaware of the complex challenges this new strategy would bring. For over 20 minutes, he trailed behind the elusive girl, keeping a safe distance, determined to uncover the truth hidden behind her mysterious actions. 
to maintain a safe distance and avoid detection. They traveled to a remote, rundown neighborhood characterized by dilapidated old buildings with leaking roofs and shattered windows. Amanda walked with a determined pace towards a house at the street's end, prompting Colin's instincts to flare up with a sense of foreboding. The house appeared deserted, seemingly untouched by life for many years, yet odd noises emanated from within, indicating it was occupied. It became apparent that this was where the mystery behind why a young girl like Amanda had to sleep alone in a park was concealed. The increasingly anxious officer observed as the girl approached the front door and sat waiting. After a few minutes, a woman emerged, herding a group of children inside. Amanda stood, joined them, and the woman shut the door firmly behind them, shocked by what he witnessed and unable to remain idle. Colin cautiously moved closer to a window from which he could hear the unsettling hum of machinery. Realizing the gravity of the situation and the peril of his solitary infiltration, Colin decided to retreat and call for backup. However, time was not on his side, and before assistance could arrive, he felt compelled to act. Hidden in bushes nearby, Colin spotted the woman he had seen earlier, now leading the children out while clutching a large, sharp pair of scissors, fearing for their safety. He emerged from his cover and identified himself to the woman. She attempted to flee, but Colin, tired of chasing suspects, sprinted after her, caught her by the arm, and subdued her. Without a word, he handcuffed her and led her back to the house, determined to uncover the full truth. Upon entering, a foul stench hit him, and the living room presented a sorrowful sight of accumulated trash discarded clothing, and empty food containers. The walls, smeared with grime and peeling faded paint, added to the bleak atmosphere of a place unfit for habitation, especially for children. Colin secured the woman to the staircase and began searching the premises for the hidden children. As he ascended the stairs and pushed open the first door upstairs, he was met with a chilling scene that laid bare the grim reality of the situation, in a dimly lit, cramped room. About twenty children huddled together, a poignant sight of distress and neglect. These children, ranging from toddlers to slightly older kids, were in a pitiful state, dirty, underfed, and visibly shaken. Each held a tiny needle and thread in their small, frail hands. Among them, a boy who seemed slightly older than the others, perhaps around six years old, stood out. Despite his young age, the signs of malnutrition were evident in his gaunt frame and distended belly. When the policeman entered, it was this brave young boy who stepped forward, with an urgency born of desperation. He quickly disclosed the grim reality that the officers had suspected but hadn't confirmed. The woman they had recently apprehended was indeed exploiting these children. She had lured them into working in an illegal sewing operation promising them one hot meal a day and a roof over their heads in exchange. These were street children, each from a background marred by poverty and familial breakdown. Where societal safeguards had tragically failed them, they were promised a sanctuary but found themselves entrapped in a cycle of exploitation. Tirelessly producing cheap clothing for the woman's profit, Detective Colin, the officer on the scene, was overwhelmed with a mix of rage, sadness, and a newfound resolve to end this cruelty. He made sure the woman was securely detained before turning his attention to ensuring the children's safety. His mind also fixated on finding Amanda, the little girl who had initially tipped him off about this operation. He suspected she was hidden somewhere on the premises, likely terrified of the repercussions. After a thorough search, Colin found Amanda in a secluded part of the building. She was seated at a small table, mechanically operating a sewing machine. Her little hands moved with a weary precision, and her eyes, once filled with fear, now seemed just tired and resigned. Approaching her, Colin noticed her startled glance, which quickly morphed into a look of fearful hope. Speaking softly yet assertively, he reassured her of her safety and his intention to help. Initially, Amanda was hesitant, her trust evidently eroded by her harrowing experiences. However, as Colin continued to speak gently, her demeanor changed, culminating in a smile that broke through her guarded expression, a clear sign she was beginning to trust him. Colin comforted her, 
promising protection and a future free from fear. It was in this moment that Amanda felt a glimmer of hope. Perhaps for the first time in a long while, she felt secure and no longer fearful of the uncertain future, it's going to be okay. Amanda, you are safe now, I will never leave you alone, the agent promised her, wrapping his arms around her comfortingly. Soon after, more police officers arrived at the scene, swiftly moving the children out of the decrepit house. They draped cozy blankets over their shoulders, a gesture meant to provide some warmth and comfort. The children's reactions varied greatly, some were in tears, others sat in numb silence, but all shared a palpable sense of relief at having been rescued from such a bleak environment. After their escape, the children were provided not only with hot meals and clean clothes but also received much-needed medical care. They were treated for effects of malnutrition and minor injuries sustained during their ordeal. Amanda, in particular, had faced months of forced labor in a factory, but now, she was free from that horrific place. She felt an overwhelming sense of happiness and gratitude for her liberation. However, unlike the other children, she was hesitant to go with the police officers. Colin Smith, one of the officers, understood why Amanda was so fearful. Her distrust toward adults stemmed from continual disappointment, as every adult in her life, including her own parents, had let her down. Smith delved deeper into Amanda's background and learned that her parents had perished in a tragic fire, leading to her placement in a foster home. Unfortunately, Amanda never settled into any foster home and ran away multiple times due to mistreatment. Though her complaints were consistently ignored, the system had utterly failed her, exacerbating her suffering and making it difficult for her to trust anyone anew. Despite these challenges, Smith did not lose hope. Over the next few weeks, he and his partner Hannah made efforts to understand Amanda better, learning more about her past and her emotions. When they inquired about any other relatives, Amanda sadly shook her head, she had no one else in the world. During their interactions, Amanda clung to Agent Colin and never let go of his arm, signaling her deep-seated fear and need for security. Observing this, Agent Hannah proposed an idea to her partner. Considering Amanda's immediate need for care and a stable environment, she suggested that Colin take Amanda home to his family. To everyone's surprise, Amanda agreed to this arrangement and promised not to run away. She quickly settled into life at Officer Smith's home, finding comfort and safety in the new surroundings. Initially, Smith had intended to find her a foster family, but as time passed, he realized he wanted nothing more than to provide Amanda with a permanent home filled with love and protection. Smith and his wife officially completed the adoption of little Amanda, marking a new chapter in her life and putting an end to her previously tragic circumstances. This significant act provided Amanda with the familial love and support she had been lacking throughout her early years. Did this heartwarming and unexpected story resonate with you? If so, we warmly invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below. Your feedback is highly appreciated. That's all about our today's stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. See you next time.